I love that the family is out to support you tonight. Oh, I know. I got my mom and my sister, and I didn't even know if they were coming. I called her last night and said, here's my credit card. Get on a plane. Text me if you come. And then she forgot to text me. So, um, so she just showed up. Yeah, she just showed up. So, oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, you are literally dressed to kill for this role. In the movie or right now? In the movie, but you're also dressed to kill. I know. I sort of feel like... I'm a really shy person, so when I have to do this sort of stuff, I have to be in character a little bit, or I would just like curl up. Um, and I really like wearing onesies in real life, so this is like you know, you got to be in character a little bit. <laughs> you're so funny. You're so funny. Onesies—they're amazing. I mean, they are, but I just love that you're so. You're like not like you know, like silly, goofy ones. Those are fun too, but like you can get away. They make onesies that you can wear in real life. Like free people, they make some onesies that you're like, oh, it's like a real life outfit, but it's also pajamas. See, and I imagine you at home as your character in um, a simple favor, like in silk pajamas. <laughs> I know, isn't that fun? Like, it's like the Turner imagine. classic movies where like Joan Crawford's coming down the stairs with like feather and ga I, that's how I imagine me too. It's not real, no. Anyway, you completely stripped down to become Stephanie. Tell me about that process and what it did. What did that sort of feel like for you? Well, it was really interesting to make this movie with women. So we had a female producer, Barbara Broccoli, who's you know Mrs. Bond. She's everything James Bond, um, and then Reed Morano, who you know from. The Handmaid's Tale. So, women who are make, tell incredible stories, uh, stories about powerful women that aren't just specifically for women. You know, they're very universal. Um, and and I think that if I would have done this movie with a man, from my experience, be a little bit through the male gaze. Like I would have been dressed like this for most of the movie, um, and uh, um, the life that she's in would have been hypersexualized and glamorized. Even in the beginning, you know, when she's at her lowest, there's they would want her to still be sexy. Um, and I think that it's neat to see her be a human and be at her lowest, and then find her, uh, watch her find herself and reclaim herself. Anyone that's experienced grief can relate to this character. I think on a level. Yeah, I think it's not just grief, though. I think that anybody who, um, you know, we all imagine what we would do if we had to fight to survive. And the way that Reed shoots, she traps you with the character. You are experiencing the character not only with her, but as her. She never cuts out of, you know, when there's a car chase, you're in the car the whole time. When there's a fight, you're in the fight. You're never in anyone else's perspective. Um, and this woman is a human being who has nothing left to lose. So she's not a trained assassin. It's very easy to watch this movie and think, oh my God, this could be me. And like, what would I do if I were in this scenario? And she's terrified most of the movie, which was so much fun because like, you know, if you're in a car chase, it's great to see people be all slick and have it under control. But it's, to me, it was even more fun to play somebody who's like, oh my God, this is crazy. Um, because that's what it would be like. <laughs> you're so right. She's so scared the whole time. Um, I didn't even have to act. They were like, action. <laughs> gas on and I was just screaming um, it's fun though uh, you committed so much to this role uh, you did the car chases the gunshot all of this um, how did you hurt your arm and what happened with that it was my hand my wrist my um, the tendons in there I broke some things I uh, dislocated some things I severed some ligaments it was a real real mess um, but that happens there's a fight between me and Jude Law in the kitchen and there's no stunt doubles, it's just the two of us for about four minutes fighting each other. And I went to punch him very aggressively the same time that he went to block it and our timing was a little off. And when it's one shot, you're not like picking off little pieces. It has to, if one thing goes wrong early on, a slight little thing, someone's off the wrong position, then the whole thing dominoes. Um, so yeah, we, we collided. And then I kept shooting for a week because I think I'm a tough guy. Yes, we all. Oh my gosh, I know. so I know. stupid. <laughs> I was like holding binoculars the next day and my hand was like this. And, and uh, I, anyway, eventually I went home and had a couple surgeries. Oh. Uh, last question. I know that this is all Bond producers. It's a very Bond-esque vibe. Would you ever consider being the next Bond once Daniel Craig passed? Well, uh, you know, I think it's interesting. Barbara said, uh, she said Bond is is a man and she was like I would never hire a woman to tell a man's story women are so much more interesting than that <laughs> and I thought that that was great and you know and here is a film where she 
made good on her promise. She went into the genre and she hired a woman to tell a woman's story in this genre, and um, and it's just as universal as Bond is. As a you know, as an audience member watching Bond as a female, I love it. I connect with it. I you know cheer for it, and I think that men would feel the same sitting in here watching, you know, Stephanie Patrick kick, ass, kick some sure. A double money side.